required. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Brady for holding this hearing today, and I appreciate the opportunity to highlight a few of the priorities that I have to work in a bipartisan way. First, I'd like to highlight H.R. 2314, the Nuclear Powers America Act, which will bolster and create parity for the nuclear energy industry. Importantly, this bill has strong bipartisan support. The nuclear industry supports 475,000 jobs across the country, more than any other sector of the power generation industry. They provide nearly 20% of the electricity supply, produce more than 60% of the emissions-free generation in the country, and run more than 92% of the time, regardless of adverse weather conditions. The existing nuclear fleet also plays a key role in our national security. Illinois is home to six nuclear plants, my home state, supporting more than 6,000 jobs and accounting for over 50% of Illinois' electricity generation. Unfortunately, for various reasons, America's nuclear industry is facing unprecedented economic challenges, and we are at risk of losing much of the nation's fleet as a result. H.R. 2314 provides a tax credit for continued capital investment in existing nuclear plants. The credit equals 30% of certain nuclear energy-related expenditures made by the taxpayer for each taxable year through 2023 and phases out over time. Next, I would like to talk about another bipartisan piece of legislation, H.R. 1349, the Small Business Tax Fairness and Compliance Simplification Act, which I have introduced with Congresswoman Del Benny of Washington. Our bill will address some of the tax uncertainty and disparity small business owners in the beauty industry encounter, including the reporting of tip income. It updates and modernizes existing laws to provide equitable treatment and administrative relief to small businesses engaged in the hair care and beauty service industry. The vast majority of the beauty industry establishments have fewer than 10 employees. These small businesses provide entry-level jobs and employ a diverse workforce of roughly 1.4 million professionals. Most of these businesses are owned and operated by women and minorities. To ensure equitable tax treatment for beauty establishments, H.R. 1349 proposes to extend the FICA tip tax credit to employer-based beauty salons the, to provide increased certainty and mitigate costly and contentious IRS audits. Our proposal also includes a safe harbor for salon employees that meet IRS design tip reporting requirements. Finally, to improve compliance and provide relief to many non-employer-based salons, our proposal would modernize and clarify the information reporting rules applicable to industry professionals, providing service through different business models. Our legislation would enhance overall tax compliance and has the support of the Professional Beauty Association and salon owners across the nation. Next, I would like to comment on H.R. 3021, the Non-Emergency Ambulance Transportation Sustainability and Accountability Act, which I have introduced with Congresswoman, Congresswoman Sewell of Alabama. Under this bill, the offset used in the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018 for ground ambulance add-on payments is restructured to more appropriately distribute the reimbursement reduction among ambulance suppliers and provides based on what portion of the company's business relies on transporting pre-scheduled, non-emergent, end-stage renal disease, or ESRD, patients to and from dialysis centers. Suppliers and providers that focus primarily on non-emergency non ESRD transport represent less than 5% of suppliers and providers nationwide and have lower operating and staffing costs than ambulance providers and suppliers who are required to staff and provide ambulance units for all types of services. A greater reduction in Medicare payment for non-emergency ESRD providers better reflects the lower costs associated with providing these services. In central and west central Illinois in my district, providers like Advanced Medical Transport of Central Illinois and Peoria work to provide 24-7 emergency transport support for my constituents. Having to absorb this level of cuts to their reimbursement threatened to hinder their ability to financially sustain around-the-clock care to rural communities in Illinois' 18th district. This bill is a sensible solution to ensuring that all ambulance suppliers and providers continue to serve the crucial needs of Medicare patients in rural areas. I thank you, Chairman, and I yield back. 